I thank you, I thank everyone in the, uh, in the chamber for the warm welcome, and um, I'm looking forward to working with uh, each and every member uh, of the North Carolina Senate uh, in the upcoming session and over the next two years. Uh, I'd like to take a, a moment to uh, recognize a few people who are with us today, and I think you've heard their names uh, several times. First, my family, uh, my wife, Pat, uh, my sons, uh, Phil Jr. Uh, and Kevin, uh, my daughter, Ashley, uh, Kevin's wife, Amber, uh, Ashley's husband, Josh, uh, and my grandchildren, uh, Philip III, Will, Jackson, uh, and uh, Emily. Um, uh, Emily just made me so proud uh, when she sang the national anthem, and uh, I hope you will, uh, uh, will give me that, uh, uh, that moment to, uh, to savor that. So thank you, Emily. Uh, the unwavering support of my family, and I know for everybody in this chamber, for your family, uh, is a critical part of our ability to do uh, what we do here uh, in the uh, North Carolina Senate. Uh, I want to thank uh, North Carolina Supreme Court Chief Justice Mark Martin for participating in the ceremony. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest, uh, thank you uh, for, uh, for presiding and for what you do for us uh, every day and uh, helping us with, uh, with the debate and uh, moving things along. And I want to thank the Army JROTC -R Color Guard from um, John Motley Moorhead uh, High School uh, in my home of, hometown of Eden. Uh, they have participated in this ceremony on several occasions for us, and uh, it's always great to, uh, to see them here and to uh, really see the young people that we have coming along that uh, one day will be taking the place of, uh, of us older folks uh, here in the chamber. Today is a day to, de to celebrate the call to public service. Uh, after reviewing your platform, uh, after uh, listening to what you have to say, after asking you all sorts of questions, uh, millions of people in North Carolina went to the polls this past November and elected the members of this chamber to represent their communities and to be their voice in state government. With that comes tremendous responsibility, and with that comes a duty to work hard and remain focused on fulfilling the promises that you made. And boy, I can tell you, uh, you are going to work hard this session. While we are technically a part-time legislature, you all know, or if you don't know, you will find out that there is nothing part-time about being a state senator. It will require a steadfast commitment to put the best interests of your neighbors, your community, and your state above yourself. You will devote long, sometimes difficult hours at the legislature most days for the next several months, away from your families, away from your neighbors, and away from the comforts of, uh, of your home. For most of you, you will somehow have to find time to fulfill the obligations of your regular full-time job uh, in order to support your family. And when you finally reach the end of your work week here, you will likely spend your weekends engaged in community activities and attending civic events in your district. There will be little to no time for rest. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the people who make all of this possible. To the families of our members, whether you're on the floor or whether you're in the, in the gallery, uh, the sacrifices you make in sharing your loved ones for countless hours every week does not go unnoticed. Without a strong support network at home, our members simply could not do what they do. Thank you for your contribution to the state of North Carolina. There's no question it takes a special group of people, a special group of people, and I'll leave it to you to define special, uh, to sign up for this job. It's worth it in the end, however, and let me share my perspective uh, as to why, in spite of the challenges that we face, uh, particularly the personal challenges, so many continue to sign up for this work. We come back because we've seen the fruits of our efforts. We know what is done here can make a positive and meaningful difference in the lives of our, fe fe of our, federal, sorry, of our fellow North Carolinians. Just six short years ago, our state faced a double-digit unemployment rate, fifth highest in the entire country. Now, due in large part to difficult decisions made by the legislature, our unemployment rate has fallen in half, 
and North Carolina is creating jobs faster than other states. North Carolina once struggled with stagnant job growth, declining family incomes. Now, now a thriving economy has generated more than 450,000 new jobs. The number of working North Carolinians has soared to historic highs. And median household income in North Carolina has jumped by close to $10,000 per household. Our state and its private sector economic engine was once burdened with the highest taxes in the southeast and one of the worst tax climates in the nation. Now, as a result of our nationally recognized tax cuts and tax reform, North Carolina businesses and citizens pay billions of dollars less in taxes. Our state now boasts the best tax climate in the region and the 11th best tax climate in the nation. But there is still more work to be done. We were once weighed down by record budget deficits and billions of dollars in debt to the federal government. Now, balanced budgets and controlled spending, along with a growing economy, have yielded consecutive years of budget surpluses. Our debt to the federal government has been paid in full. Public schools were once struggling with declining state support. Thousands of state-funded teachers' positions were eliminated. Teachers were furloughed and their pay was frozen. Now, state funding for our public schools has reached record levels. New teachers have been hired and average teacher pay has climbed above $50,000 for the first time in state history. When we assumed the majority in January of 2011, our state's rainy day fund was depleted. Now, as we saw with the swift response to recent natural disasters, we are well prepared for emergencies and downturns with more than $1.5 billion in the state's savings reserve. There's no question that due to hard work and perseverance of public servants in this building and their supportive families, our state has made a dramatic turnaround. It's working toward the kinds of positive change that help make North Carolina the best state to build a business and the best state to live and raise a family. And that is something that brings so many people back year after year. And even though our roles differ, sorry, and even though our role offers the privilege and responsibility to implement broad policy changes that affect millions, sometimes the most rewarding part of the job is the opportunity to help just one person, to provide constituent service and help our neighbors, help our neighbors solve real world problems one at a time by helping children get to the right schools or educational programs to meet their unique needs, by helping sick constituents contact the proper officials to obtain the care they need, by helping families pursuing an adoption cut through government red tape, by helping people resolve drainage and other problems resulting from road work on or near their properties, and by expediting assistance from the federal government with VA issues, passports, and other needs. Perhaps there's no better example of the problems we can solve when we work together than the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. Senator Ford and Senator Smith Ingram, just to name a couple, I commend you, your efforts to help supply power, housing, and medical supplies to those affected by the floods. And it was an honor for my office to assist in some small way. What many don't realize is that the lion's share of what we work on in these halls is not controversial. Most laws pass with overwhelming bipartisan support. No matter what our political party, we're all here because we want to help our state thrive and for our citizens to reach their full potential. It's disheartening that some only want to focus on what divides us, what draws in the most campaign contributions, what attracts the most free press attention, what is sensational enough to sell the most newspapers and television advertisements. Members, as we consider the task ahead at the start of this session, let us remember all that we can accomplish when we work together. And let us remember that all, all that can be achieved as we continue down this new path for our state and labor to fulfill the promises we made to our constituents. In the coming session, we'll maintain the budgeting and spending discipline and the commitment to pro-growth tax policies that have helped return our state to good fiscal health. Let me be clear, we will not under any circumstances return to the failed tax and spend policies of the past that gave us the mess that we had in 2011. 
We'll continue to look for ways to reduce the tax burden on families, small businesses, and other job creators, helping them keep more of their own money. We'll continue efforts to reform and improve public education for our students and have already committed to raising average teacher pay to $55,000 over the next two years. We'll remain focused on providing a bright future for our children and helping build a capable workforce that will attract business to the state. We'll do even more to simplify outdated job killing rules and regulations and foster a better business climate with the goal of sustaining North Carolina's strong job growth. And we'll continue building state reserves to make sure that North Carolina is well prepared for the future. I want to thank you again for your commitment to public service and to the state of North Carolina. May we enjoy a collegial and productive session. May we come together to achieve positive and lasting change. And may God continue to bless this body and the people of North Carolina. Thank you.